Good morning, sirs, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name's uh, Andy Deans, and I'm going to introduce the challenge of skills and training. And if you thought recruitment was a, a wide scope, then try <laughs> skills and training. So uh, let's go. Okay, this is what we're wanting you to help us with, which is understand and track the knowledge, skills, and experience, and other attributes already available within our people to enable their development, both as individuals and collectively to meet the needs of the organization or for self-improvement and better identify individuals for tasks or roles. We are particularly interested in solutions that provide approaches to more effective delivery of training outputs, reduce the time spent in training, and to drive efficiencies. Our people and the challenges of skills. Defence is looking for solutions which will provide assurance that our workforce is suitably knowledgeable, skilled and experienced to meet our needs both today and in the future. <coughs> As we move forward, our approach to skills must remove any artificial boundaries or differences within and between the separate services and the civil service, civil service and element, elements of defence industry who are in need of similar skills. We accept that there are some fundamental differences between these areas and we wish to see a future training endeavour that is whole force by design. And we can unpack that later this afternoon if you need to. We should strive for similarity and not allow our approach to be constrained or defined by any differences. Okay, to start with, whilst with terms training and education can be used, within this context we will use the term training uh, to avoid repetition. In these instances, training can encompass uh, training, education, learning and development, both individual and collective, which is designed to meet a need of defence. So a little bit of context, because it is a large area in terms of what we're dealing with. Individual training. In this context, and in the name suggests, um, individual training is focused on the person and has evolved an approach that provides militarization. The induction process, which we call initial training, professional and career training, which prepares individuals with the necessary skills for success in the next career stage, and skills that are required in the next assignment or role. To provide some wider context, approximately 13,000 regular service personnel and 6,000 reservists join the armed forces and commence training each year. Each service has a different journey, with areas of clear intended operating environments, which could be land, uh, sea or air. Given their immediate command roles, um, officers' training is different and uh, has to be separated. Professional task-specific training, uh, which provides scope for individuals uh, training the novice and then learning um, on the trade, uh, this can be accommodate. This can be um, uh, as an area for um, uh, area of uh, uh, scope and uh, focus for yourselves. But if this approach were adopted, then a different approach to planning and training uh, execution may be well required. The needs of the individual, rather than the convenience and ease of planning for the class or cohort, could define the critical path for planning purposes. Once in the workplace, the novice skills can be refined, and as experience grows, the individual can be assessed to confirm their level of competence. This competence needs to be refreshed and updated, which is achieved through workplace and continuous training and education. These formal training interventions are complemented by ongoing personal development, which is the education, training and experience that enhances professional development and pr promotes personal motivation. It may not be direct, directly uh, contribute to an individual's uh, ability to perform better in their current or future, uh, in their current job, but it may contribute to their uh, uh, future capability and links into retention. We're also including the civil service. Civil service training is based on individual development needs and training required for undertaking the role. 
In its most basic terms, training for civil servants in the MOD is broken down into four categories, which you see here. Mandatory training, personal effectiveness, leadership and management, and professions-specific training. Learning under each of these categories can be assessed through our two main providers, civil service learning and defense, the Defence Academy. In summary, it is individually focused, complex, and largely outsourced, outsourced currently. Collective training. Fighting or combat effect is achieved at the collective level and often involves people and equipment operating effectively as one. At the most basic level, we equip the man, providing a soldier with a weapon. At the extreme, we man the equipment, which in its most obvious is about ships, uh, submarines and aircraft. Collective training is when we optimise performance and start to train um, at the team level and all the way through to tra complex training exercises involving all three services and often other nations. So, the challenges, which I've broken down into three main areas. First of all, improve the speed at which skills are acquired, or what we call speed to skill, across defense, and this might be by exploiting new technologies, including AI, etc., learning methodologies, and through smarter planning and delivery that makes the most of use and use of scarce resources. <coughs> Secondly, we aim to strike the right balance between professional and personal development, encouraging the former and optimizing the timing and effect of the latter. The approach must improve individual capability and deliver better productivity through smarter, shorter training interventions. And lastly, design equipment that minimizes the demand for skills and thus training. Again, exploiting technology to um, get the potential use of AI and automation. Right, what were the solutions, what may they do? Well, first of all, they may enable us to reduce the cost of developing new skills and knowledge in our people. They may enable us to produce resource optimized plans that make optimum use of all the strands of resources, training, trainers, trainees, equipment, infrastructure, time and costs. You may reduce the skills and knowledge fade throughout a career, improve access to niche or critical skills for the future, improve the capability of defense people to innovate and adapt for the future, promote a learning culture that encourages learning from experience, and improve productivity in the workforce by developing skills through individual learning throughout a career and promoting continuous adult learning throughout the whole workforce. So to equip MOD to understand the implications of emerging technologies and our residual human skills, ethics, moral judgment, and how to incorporate these uh, an impact into workforce planning. So, factors that you may want to consider. How can defence reduce its training overhead, as we mentioned before, to adapt a more modular, needs-based approach to training? To what extent could different technologies and simulated environments support a more responsive, efficient training machine? How do we create and innovate a different mindset amidst those involved in people, skills and training? How do we encourage leaders and managers to lead organisational learning and champion talent development? And how do we, need, how do we enable the identification of knowledge, skills and uh, the abilities that would contribute to the delivery of minute training, where that capital has not been developed in the individual by military training already? It may be that an individual has an appropriate inherent ability that doesn't need to be taken further in expensive training. And how do we encourage leaders, leaders and managers to role model organisational learning and champion the development of talent? So, to summarise, these are the challenges that we would like you to help, with us, help us with. Sorry. Um, understand and track the knowledge, skills and experience and other attributes already available within our people to enable their development. 
both as individuals and collectively to meet the needs of the organization or for self-improvement and better identify individuals for tasks or roles. And we are particularly interested in solutions that provide approaches to more effective delivery of training outputs, reduce the time spent on training and drive training efficiencies.